Yeah, I think it's about empty. We'll have to mix another batch. Hi guys, how are we doing today? We're gonna mix up a batch of minerals for the cows today. We do this about once a week. It takes the last the batch of minerals lasts about once a week. We make about 120 pounds at a time. We use a cement mixer, just a cement mixer, and then we keep basic minerals on stock. We keep trace mineralized salt, dicalcium phosphate. This here is a trace mineral I'd like to talk about. And magnesium oxide. And then I have some, there's some calcium. I usually keep a sulfur product too for whenever we're grazing corn or something like that. Our mineral mix calls for potassium sulfate, I believe it's called. But I don't know for sure. This is a salt that I got from Young's a while back that I haven't used. It's got 3,020 parts per million of iron. This salt's red. I'm not quite sure understanding about this salt. Um, we don't use it. I contacted my nutritionist and they told me that iron will lock up copper and some other essential nutrients in your livestock. So we do not use that. That's actually, we use it to uh, put salt down on any of the alleyways that we have in the fields we're moving livestock on. But we use two Agar King products. One's called Beef Multifactors. It has uh, the essential vitamins that's necessary we got calcium is the big one there's minimum is it nine percent maximum is ten and a half percent there's one percent magnesium and then for me we have some copper deficiencies in our livestock so that's eight thousand five hundred and fifty parts per million of copper we have a lot of vitamin a which helps with your reproduction and there's vitamin D at 182,000 and then vitamin E at 10,800. And we also use what they call selenium yeast 600. It's a selenium product. It has selenium because in our area, our soils are selenium deficient. So it doesn't matter what you do to your soils. Your cows are not going to get the selenium they need. And if you've never had uh, white muscle disease in any of your calves, you don't want it, or in your kids or, or sheep, selenium is very, very essential. Your calves will be, be slow to get up, slow to nurse. Sometimes they won't get up at all. You have to feed them. Since we've started on the Agri King program, we haven't had any white muscle disease, but one year we had 15 calves that we had to get nursing on moms or we had to bottle feed them or and it was all because that we were a selenium deficient and trust me when I say it wasn't fun it sucked actually and then here's some magnesium we're starting to put magnesium in our our mix being that the cows are coming out gonna be they're starting to graze grass a little bit of grass right now so we don't put as much in but we put a little bit in the cows are starting to graze grass and we want to try to offset the chance of having grass tinny. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about forage or what we do in our mineral program. I get I get asked by a lot of folks what my what our mineral program is. And I'm not gonna talk bad about anybody else's mineral program. Every farm specialized. I mean, there's everything from the buffet feeders to, to using a salt block. And if that's working for you, that's fine. But 
The mineral program that I'm using is what makes most sense for us. Basically what we're doing is we're taking tissue samples of the plants, we're sending them in, and we're checking them for deficiencies. And those deficiencies, we can adjust the minerals for the cows at any given point to make sure that they have the, the proper nutrients that they need. And that's basically the gist of what my mineral program is. And like I said, it's it's what makes most sense to me and that's that's how we're gonna do it. And I would recommend it for other folks to try it. Uh, it's worked extremely well for us. I will tell you when we had our high input lives or high input cattle, our mineral our mineral cost was almost double what they are today. And the mineral cost on our farm is actually the second highest input we have right now. And it's greatly, greatly reduced. It went from $7,000 when we had uh, the high input cow to the, the smaller frame, higher efficiency livestock. And that has dropped down to about $3,000 a year. So actually, our mineral costs and our hay costs cost about the same for our, our inputs on our livestock. And I expect our, our mineral intake to even go down lower as the efficiency in the livestock increase. What we do is we take forage samples of our grasses and then they s spit us back a sheet of paper like this. I've learned a lot by doing this. We take, we'll, we'll go out and do what we call a, a bite sample and we'll go through and we'll just grab a, we won't look down, we'll just grab a handful of grass and we'll take about 30 samples as we walk across the field. We mix them all together and then we'll send that sample in to have it tested. And here's an example, pasture rotational, this is field F1A, 12.8% crude protein. The IV DMD, in vitro dry matter digestibility, is 71.5. And what that is, is the, those cows are able to utilize 71.5 pounds out of 100 pounds of, of forage or dry matter that they intake. Yeah. Or in this sample, the calories is 400 and 79 calories per pound. And relative feed quality is 133. And I am no nutritionist by any means. And I always look these over and I try to make sense of them. AgriKing has a panel of doctors that I talk to if I run into problems, but they're the ones that figure out what my deficiency are in a livestock and then they'll ship, ship me back a, a sheet. And what we've learned in, in this is a lot of times when I, here's, here's an example, here's a field, it's, uh, it's Japanese millet, which would be F2A. It's the crude protein is 17.2%. Calories or energy is 507 calories to the pound. What I've learned from this and what I take away, we're mainly a cow-calf operation. That would probably be excellent feed for, say, a dairy cow or finishing stalkers on that it, when it comes to a milking beef cow, she needs between 10 and 12% crude protein. Grazing those shorter forages, or taking these tests that I have, here's, here's a test, F20. Uh, F20 was primarily an alfalfa orchard grass mix field. And the crude protein in that field when we took this test was 29% crude protein. And the calories was 761 calories. That's way, way, way too much for those cows. And if we let the field mature a little bit more, we can get more tonnage on it and it will be down because a field with 17.2% crude protein and calories of 507, basically the cows are going to eat that and it's just going to shoot right through them. And we need to slow that rate of, rate of passage down. And we could actually still graze that field and get good weight gains or milking yields on it. We may have to feed a little bit of dry, rough dry hay with it. Just it does doesn't take much. It's like a pound, pound per head per day. And if I do that, if I'm in a field like that, I will put hay beside the the water tub to help offset that. Let me see, here's one that's just about perfect for a milking, milking cow, F24. It was a red clover, orchard grass, plantain, goldenrod. There's a lot of different species in that field. The crude protein was 12% crude protein. 
the collars is 751 and that was that's a pretty good field for for a lactational beef cow what we've learned from this is a lot of times if you're going into a field and the grasses are only 16 inches high most of the time those those forages in there are weight weight more have way way more protein in them than we necessarily need especially for beef cattle now dairy cattle or finishing stalkers that may be a different story by learning this we're able to let our forages mature a little bit more and a lot of times we'll graze into pasture fields anywhere from three to four feet tall and we'll go through and we'll do a bite sample on that and you most generally those forage tests come back to more than adequate for a, a lactational beef cow and actually if you know me i try to feed the lowest plane of nutrition possible on my farm and what i'm doing is i'm making a super efficient tough cow that can withstand the environment that i put them in and by leaving the grasses grow a little bit taller that increases the root systems down into the soil a little deeper there it's able to excess, excess more moisture and it's they're able those roots are able to access more nutrients it helps with the water infiltration having those huge root systems help you get out on wetter soils you can be out earlier and stay longer at the end of the year because of the the heavy root systems i like to look at those root systems as uh, geotextile and there's there's a lot of different benefits to that and usually if you have big root systems you know your plants are high on top of the soil and one of the things that I, I never really thought about this until I got to thinking and whatnot, you know, there's a lot of compaction caused by the rain and we need to cover those soils and, you know, having them huge plants and covering those soils, we're, we're lessening the compaction so we're able to water infiltrate and we're able to store more water in our soil and we don't have problems with the summertime droughts like we used to. So that's just some of the learning stuff that I did with the <clears throat> just by taking these forage samples. What Agri King does, I'll send those forage samples in and I'll tell them what fields I'm going in. They'll spit back a report to me and they'll tell me how much of what that needs to go in into a, a ration. And say this ration here, and they ask, you know, what are we feeding? We're we feeding gestational beef cows, lactational beef cows, finishers, or calves. And that's going to dictate how many, how much mineral they need because different stages of growth, they're going to need more minerals. Pretty much stays pretty much the same. It changes a little bit throughout the year. It depends, but most generally, what what it equals out to be in is we put 50 pounds of trace mineral salt. I used to like to use Redmond salt. I can't get it affordably anymore. If anybody knows where I can get Redmond's the, the uh, TR90 at a reasonable cost let me know i think around my area here it's between 17 18 dollars a bag and this here i can pick up for seven dollars a bag and the selenium 90 i'm after the selenium and i can just add selenium yeast from agri-king just add a little more it's not a big deal and then we'll put a bag of salt a bag of dicalcium phosphate and this time of year we'll put about a third of a bag of magnesium and then our beef malt factors, we'll put approximately 10 pounds in and then we'll put three pounds of yeast in. And any more, I don't measure out and weigh it. Here's the scales that I use, it's just a platform scale. Every once in a while, I'll check myself, make sure I'm still on, on point with it. You know, it's kind of like estimating the dry matter yield in your field. You're gonna, after you do it so much, you're gonna learn that, you know, what you need and what's there. So. It's not rocket science. Throw this in and mix her up. Take a look at the final product. As you've noticed, we haven't put, we aren't uh, putting any calcium in this mix. We don't use much calcium because our forages aren't necessarily lacking in calcium. And we have a lot of forbs that are actually high in calcium. Cup plant's one of them. We tested cup plant at about three and a half percent calcium.
this is what the the beef model factors look like. They have a carrier in it of rice midlands. I don't know why they don't just take that rice midlands out and sell you a 10 pound bag. I'm sure would save on shipping, wouldn't it? What's out. Hi, buddy. What? Is it time for loving and kissing, this is, huh? It's all bad. You guys, I'll tell you what. You're like got to be the best friends a man could have. I'm so lucky. Selenium and yeast looks about the same as the malta factors because of the, the rice midlands that they're putting in it. You can see some sparklies in there. Put her in there like that. Build a lid for on it because some of this, being that the stuff's so fine, it's so dusty. So I just put a. You know what my high, high quality switches look like. Just plug an extension cord into a. And let that mix a little bit. Doesn't really need to mix too long. We usually use about pretty close to a ton to a ton and a half minerals every year. Somewhere in that neighborhood. For those of you who didn't see the, the oops, I forgot the minerals video, I'll put a link up top here so you can take a look at that. We quit using any type of mineral feeders or mineral tubs when it's dry out. We just dump them along the fence line and right on the ground. And it's we've been doing this now for a while and it's been working extremely well for us. Now, whenever it's wet like it is here today, you can see my mud puddle down here. It, we can... Uh, we put it in a, you can see it right over there. There's a 55 gallon drum cut in half and then it has a, has legs on it. We'll take that out to the cows here after a bit with us because it is getting kind of muddy. Wherever they take their minerals in, it gets a little bit muddy. But let's take a look at this and see what it looks like. need to mix it very long. See it's pretty dusty. That's what the finished product looks like. Bring it out here where you can see it a little better. Everything's mixed in there pretty well. That's the minerals that we feed our cows. Most generally are our ration sheet tells us we need to feed 0.35 pounds per animal unit. They used to try and figure it out on cows, you know, how much your cows weigh, and then they, they'd give you how much we should give each cow. And I told them, why don't we just do it on a thousand pound animal, and then I can adjust it for the weights because everything that we do on the farm is an animal unit. So that's what we do. Well, friends, hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'd like to thank all you subscribers for subscribing to the channel, commenting to the videos. Have a good week, friends. Have a good one. Bye.